The Lord God Almighty. Big is God's strength. God of Abraham, God of Isaac, and God of Israel. Make straight his path in the wilderness. Your name is Jehovah. Your name is Jesus Christ. Your name is Holy Spirit. Let his light. Let his light shine in the darkness. My love and greetings to each and every one of you. In the precious name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. My name is David Turner, and I want to welcome you to this week's program, The Gospel is the Power. This week I want to share with you a message that I spoke at a recent crusade at the Orpheum Theater in Phoenix, Arizona. It's entitled, Come In, Blessed One of the Lord, Enter In. Amen? You are the blessed one of the Lord. God has such blessing for your life as you believe Jesus Christ. He wants to pour out, as per Haggai 2.19 says, from this day, the blessing shall enter your life same way as it says in the word will happen to you today as you listen to this message. Enter in to faith in Jesus Christ. Enter into his love. Enter into his healing. Enter into the hope of Jesus Christ. Enter into his salvation. Precious child of God, Jesus said in the book of Revelation chapter 3 verse 20, he said, Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If you will invite me in, I will come in and I will dine with you and be with you. That's the words of Jesus Christ. He's calling that unto you today and saying, Blessed one of the Lord, enter in. The message that God has placed upon my heart this night is entitled, Come in, O blessed one of the Lord, enter in. Amen? Hallelujah. Book of Genesis, chapter 24, verse 31. It says exactly that. It says, come in, O blessed one of the Lord. Enter in. Hallelujah. So you are already blessed tonight because you have come into this place tonight. Amen? Now before we start, I'm just going to go. I can tell right now you need this encouragement. You can blame the people in the first night for me losing my voice. So I can't yell and shout at you tonight. But that doesn't mean I don't want to hear you fired up and saying amen, hallelujah, and praise the Lord. Amen? Amen. I heard you during worship, so I know you have it in you. Amen? Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Come in. You are already blessed because you've come into this place tonight. You are the blessed one of the Lord. But now, as we've already come in, we now must enter in. You see, the Holy Bible tells us we have to enter in. We have to enter in to the love of God. Book of 1 John chapter 4, verse 8. When we, it says God is love. You see, we can't, everyone's looking for love. But we can't find love anywhere else in our lives. Not in our family, not in our marriage relationships, not with our children, not with the people around us. Until we enter in to the love of God. Until we understand who we are and what love is by how much Jesus Christ loves you. When you get one glimpse of the love of God and you enter in to the love 
for he is love, you will first be able to then respond and love those around you. Amen? We must enter into the love of God. We must enter in now tonight into the joy of God, for this is the kingdom of God. Book of Nehemiah, chapter 8, verse 10. It says, the joy of the Lord is our strength. So how do you enter into joy? I want to tell you tonight, precious people of God, you can't enter into joy by gaining the things of the world, having a house, having a better job, thinking people around you will love you that will never bring the joy in your life. The way you enter into joy is through worship. When you worship the Lord Jesus Christ, automatically the joy comes in your life. Many people think, oh, that man has plenty of stuff. Of course, he's joyful. That's not joy. That is happiness in the moment which comes from happenstance. But the true joy comes from worshiping Jesus Christ. You can be rich, you can be poor, you can be having your worst day, your best day. If you stop in the moment and you start to worship the Lord Jesus Christ, automatically the joy of the Lord will come into your life. You will enter into his joy and it will be the very strength of your life. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. We must enter into the joy. Tonight we must enter into the peace of God. The Bible tells us in the book of Isaiah, chapter 26, verse 3. Isaiah, chapter 9, verse 6. Isaiah, chapter 48, verse 18. Colossians, chapter 1, verse 20. In all the places you will see that the peace of God will come upon you. That when you are wrestling with the challenges of your life, with sin, with sickness, it's the blood of Jesus Christ that will bring you peace. As you enter into faith in Jesus Christ, you will be able to stand strong on the peace of God. And the peace of God, the Bible says in Philippians 4, verse 6 to 7, will guard your heart and your mind in Christ Jesus. And no matter what you're going through, whatever the circumstances, you can stand in that peace when you enter into the peace of Jesus Christ. Amen. We must enter in to his righteousness this night. Precious people of God. The Holy Bible tells us, book of Genesis, chapter 22, verse 17. Hebrews, chapter 6, verse 14. Book of Genesis, chapter 15, verses 1 to 6. The first way that we can enter into righteousness is by believing God. In all those verses, you'll see that God promised Abraham, surely I will bless you. He said, I will bless you like the stars in the heaven, the grains of sand on the seashore. It's the blessing of heaven and earth, the same blessing that Jesus Christ wants to give you tonight. And you see, you can only enter into that blessing by being righteous. And that righteousness comes first and foremost by believing God. Again, Genesis 15, 1 to 6. The moment we believe God, Abraham believed God and it was accounted to him as righteousness. And this very night, when you believe God, immediately you are ever able to enter in and he will call you righteous. Amen. The second way you can enter into the righteousness, book of 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 21, it says we are only righteous by the blood of Jesus Christ. So the moment you believe and you believe the birth and the death and the resurrection of Jesus Christ, who is the Son of God, and his ascension into heaven, automatically you are able to enter into righteousness. Amen? So we must all enter in to the righteousness of God this night. We must enter in to the salvation of Jesus Christ. The Bible tells us in Romans chapter 10, verse 13, all who call upon the name of Jesus shall be saved. Jesus Christ said, in the book of John, he said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. Amen. Nobody comes to the Father except through me. Hallelujah. You can only enter in to the salvation of heaven through faith in Jesus Christ. So we must put our faith in Jesus this night and enter in unto salvation. And finally, we must enter in to the healing power of Jesus Christ. 
Exodus chapter 15, verse 26, Jesus Christ is Jehovah Rapha. He is the Lord who healeth thee. It is only through the blood and sacrifice of Jesus Christ. The Bible says, book of Jeremiah, chapter 17, verse 14, unless Jesus saves, we are not saved. Unless Jesus heals, we are not healed. People say, is, is healing for me? Precious people, through faith in Jesus Christ, you can enter in to your healing. Amen? The very healing of Jesus Christ. So this night, you're already a blessed one of the Lord because you've already come in. But now, if we want the fullness of the blessing that God wants to give you, we must enter in. We must enter in to his love, enter in to his joy, enter into his peace, enter into his righteousness, enter into his salvation, and enter in to his healing this night. Amen? Hallelujah. Somebody say amen. amen. Somebody say praise the Lord. Somebody say, thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. We'll be right back with more of the message. But first, I want to share with you these testimonies, these miracle healings. I know you'll be so encouraged by the real miracles of Jesus. I had um, SVT, which is uh, supraventricular tachycardia, and um, that, that's when my heart would jump to those um, high rhythms, and it was debilitating. And then I also had PAT. My heart would beat completely out of rhythm, and I would feel these skipped heartbeats all the time, and I couldn't walk across a room without my heart jumping um, to really, really high beats. I'd have to crouch down, and then it got to the point where I couldn't even lift my head up. Um, even if I was laying down, if I lifted my head up, then my heart would just race. Um, I wasn't able to take care of my kids. Um, it was very, very difficult. We, we tried every medication that they have um, for heart. I was on beta blockers. I was on uh, different blood pressure things that help control the heart. And uh, they weren't working. They weren't controlling my heart rhythms. And on top of it, they were making me really ill and um, you know, I'm feeling very faint all the time. And, um, and so you came over um, after, after work, I think it was around five o'clock. At that point, um, I had my cell phone in my hand because um, at any moment I needed to be ready to dial 911. And um, <laughs> I'm getting emotional thinking about that time. But um, I had to be ready in case because it was, um, it was life or death. And um, even, even calling 911, there wasn't a lot that they could do. And um, my heart was just did it, did it, did it, did it, and it was it was a horrible, horrible feeling. But the moment you prayed and the moment your hand touched my head, um, it was instant. I could feel my heart just go boom, 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 just immediately, just just calmed down. And um, and from there, um, you had me stand up and, and see you know if it would stay regular. And I stood up, and um, and it didn't go into that. Normally, if I would have stood up, it would have gone into that rapid you know 185 heart rate. But uh, I think it was about a week after um, you had prayed for me initially, and I had that instant miracle, and you know I was able to go back to church and, and sing and that kind of thing. Um, I went um, on that Sunday and I sang a song, and suddenly, as I was singing, shout to the Lord. Um, it felt like I was going to pass out and it was all I could do to stay conscious and I felt my heart doing that flip-flop again and that discouragement started coming on again. From there it became that battle where the enemy would try to bring it back, would try to bring that discouragement, um, to try to discourage me even from praying the prayers of faith. There is a man in the Bible, his name is Zacchaeus. Zacchaeus, he was a sinful man, a tax collector. And he was a very short man, but he wanted to see Jesus. You see, he couldn't see Jesus because Jesus was coming through Jericho and the people were lined up and he couldn't see over the people because he was short. So he ran ahead. He climbed a sycamore tree so that he might be able to see Jesus. And when Jesus was coming through, Jesus stopped. And he looked up into the tree and he saw Zacchaeus. And he said, Zacchaeus, come down. I'm coming to your house today. Zacchaeus came down. Jesus went and dined with Zacchaeus. And Zacchaeus, feeling the love and the acceptance of Jesus Christ, 
He repented and he said, I'll give half of what I have to the poor. And Jesus, seeing his heart, said, surely salvation has come unto this house today. Amen? Amen. You see, Jesus saw the repentance in his heart. And because of that, he was, ever, he was able to enter in to the salvation of the Lord Jesus Christ. Tonight, you experience the love of Jesus and his acceptance, and you can enter in for salvation and eternity in the kingdom of heaven. Amen? We find this account of Zacchaeus in the book of Luke, chapter 19, verses 1 to 10. Precious people of God, the very purpose Jesus came is in this passage, verses, nine and, verses 10 and 11. The very reason why Jesus came and did the healing, the very reason why he preached the gospel, the Spirit of the Lord was upon him to preach the good news, to declare freedom for the captives, release for the prisoners, for the sick to be healed, the blind to see, the lame to walk, the deaf to hear. Why? For one purpose. Luke 19, 10 and 11. He came to seek and save the lost. He came so that you might see his glory and enter in. And this night he has sent me to this place in the same way the Spirit of the Lord is upon me so that, for the, by the glory of God you may enter in for eternity to the kingdom of God. <laughs> Hallelujah. You see Zacchaeus, he was a sinful man. He was a tax collector. In those days, a tax collector was considered a sinner. I think things probably haven't changed much. I think we think they're sinners today too. And he not only was a tax collector, but he was the chief tax collector. That meant he was a chief sinner. Apostle Paul says in the book of 1 Timothy chapter 1, verse 15, he says, of all the sinners, I am the chief. Amen? So, Paul was a chief sinner. Zacchaeus was a chief sinner. Maybe tonight you have been a chief sinner in your life. But no more because of Jesus Christ do we need that label in our lives. It doesn't matter what you've done, where you've been. There's nothing you can do, the Bible tells us, that will separate you. Romans 8 verse 37. There's nothing that can separate you. Not height, nor death, nor mountains, nor angels, or demons, nor any other thing that can ever separate you from the love of Jesus Christ. You see... It's not about what you've done. It's about what Jesus did. Jesus died on the cross so that you could come just the way you are and you can enter in and by faith in Jesus Christ as the Son of God, you can enter into the kingdom of heaven. Hallelujah. Amen. Zacchaeus, he was short so he couldn't see Jesus. He was short in stature. What does it mean to be short in stature? Book of Isaiah, chapter 59, verse 2. It says, because of our iniquity, God has hidden his face from us. We are short in stature. God is not hearing our prayers. Book of Romans, chapter 3, verse 23. It says, we've all sinned and fallen short of the of glory of God. So we are all short in stature. But Zacchaeus, he was desperate. He was hungry and thirsty. He wanted to see Jesus. If you want to enter in, you have to be hungry and thirsty. Matthew chapter 5, verse 6. Blessed are those who are hungry and thirsty for, they, for the righteousness of God, for they shall be filled. Amen? Hallelujah. Zacchaeus, because he was hungry, he was desperate. He wanted to see Jesus. You have to ask yourself, do you want to see Jesus tonight? Do you want to see Jesus? You have to cry out, open my eyes, Lord. I want to see Jesus. Every day I pray, Job 19, 26, Jesus, Job said, I want to see my God with my own eyes. You have to pray, oh God, I know I've been a sinner, but I want to see you with my own eyes. I want to see your glory. I want to see your forgiveness. I want to see your love and your righteousness. I want to walk in your peace. I want to enter in and see my God. Amen? Amen? Hallelujah. We have to want to see Jesus. Zacchaeus wanted to see Jesus. So what did he do? He ran ahead from where the crowds were 
and he climbed a sycamore tree. He ran ahead. The significance I want to ask you tonight is where are you running? He ran ahead to see Jesus. So many people are running all over the place in their lives, but they're running everywhere except running to Jesus. So many people, I'm so busy, I hear that all day long. I can't stand that word. You know, the anachronism, or whatever that word is, that you, I use for busy, B-U-S-Y, it's being under Satan's yoke. We have to stop being so busy and enter into the presence of God. We must enter in every single day. If you don't know Jesus, tonight is your night, and this night is the night that you will enter into the kingdom of God. And if you are here tonight, and you believe Jesus, but maybe you haven't truly entered in. 14 years I walked as a believer in Jesus, but I will tell you tonight, I never entered in. But the moment I entered in, my life was never the same. We have to enter in, brothers and sisters who are in Jesus Christ. You know, we have to determine. You know, Jesus is a gentleman. He won't force anything upon you. Whatever you want. You don't want to come in, he won't. You, you don't have to come in. You don't want to invite him in, he doesn't have to come in. He only says, Revelation chapter 3, verse 20, Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If a man hears me and opens the door and invites me and I will come in and dine with him. Amen? This is where we're going with Zacchaeus and this is where we're going with you tonight. You see, he'll only stand at the door and knock. He is speaking through me tonight to you. But if you will not open the door, he will not come in. You must invite him to enter in and you will dine with Jesus Christ. We must enter in. You know, one of the first things I learned Book of John, chapter 3, verse 3. Book of Acts, chapter 14, verse 22. Book of Galatians, chapter 5, verse 19 to 21. I'm going to paraphrase all the places. One of the first things my spiritual father, Brother Harry Gomes, taught me. He said, David, Jesus said, to be born again, we must see the kingdom of God. We must, to see the kingdom of God, we must be born again. But once we're born again, it's only the first step. You see, then we have to be willing to enter. It takes a lot more effort to enter the kingdom of God. But when you enter the kingdom of God, to inherit the kingdom of God, it takes much tribulation. I want to explain that to you. You see, if you want to drive by my house and see it, it's not that difficult. You're welcome to do that. If you want to enter the house, it's a little tougher. You're going to have to know me and knock on the door and I'll let you in. But if you don't know me, you won't get in. But if you want to inherit that house, it's really tough. You're going to have to pay the mortgage and make the payments. Amen? Hallelujah. That's a tough chore. So it's the same way in the kingdom of God. Many people have not been born again. They can't even see the kingdom of God. If that's you tonight, tonight is your night to see and enter and be born again in the kingdom of God. But maybe you're here tonight and you've already seen and entered the kingdom of God. It's time you inherit the kingdom of God. And all the love, the joy, the peace, the righteousness of the kingdom of God. I tell you, brothers and sisters, tonight is your night. Enter in, says the Lord. Enter in. Enter in tonight. Amen? There are continuously new levels in God. We don't arrive the minute we believe. Every day, every week. But we have to, if we want those other levels, we have to continuously enter into our presence. We can't constantly be running all over the place and be busy wherever we want to go, doing what we want to do and say whatever we want to say. We can't do that when we are the believers in Jesus Christ. Amen? Let us pray together right now. Lord Jesus Christ, 
There are so many people maybe watching today that don't know you, but they're desperate to see you. Oh God, in the midst of the anguish in their life, maybe they've tried everything. They've been through drug problems. They've been through just pouring themselves into their business or their work. They've been believing in money. They've been believing maybe some women in their families, in whatever it is, but it's time that they turn and they put their trust and their faith in you, Jesus Christ. So right now, for every person to pray, but especially those who have never received Jesus Christ in their lives, oh God, God of Zacchaeus, the same way he was desperate to see you. God, we are desperate to see you today. Every person, if that is you, your hand right now on your heart, your eyes closed and just pray with me and believe and Jesus Christ will come into your life. In the name of Jesus, right now, Jesus Christ, we declare today that you are the God of heaven and earth. Oh God, we acknowledge like Zacchaeus, we are chief sinners. We've been sinners in our lives. We've been living for ourselves. We've been doing our own thing. And God, it hasn't worked. But God, now we've come to the point in our lives this day where we want to acknowledge that we're ready to walk your way, to follow you, to obey you, to make you Lord of our lives. Not only do we declare that you are the Savior, but you are Lord. Lord Jesus Christ, enter into each person's heart today who wants to receive you. They believe you, oh God. Every person, repeat after me, Lord Jesus Christ, I know I've sinned. I want to move beyond my sin, and that's only possible through faith in you. Forgive me for every sin. I believe you are the God of heaven and earth. I believe you were born for me. You died for me. You rose on the third day. Your death and resurrection sets me free from my sin, not of my own works. Lord Jesus, come into my heart and walk with me all the days of my life. Pour out your spirit upon me. In the name of Jesus, amen. Precious child of God, if you prayed that prayer and you believed with me today, I encourage you, go tell your pastor or a local pastor or another friend who believes Jesus Christ, and they will help you to take your next steps in walking with Jesus. May God richly bless you, and I want you to join us for the next part of our message, the continuation. Come in, blessed one of the Lord. Enter in. See you next week on The Gospel is the Power. Big is Make straight his path in the wilderness. Let his light shine. Let his light shine in the darkness. Let your Let your rain fall in this desert. For I hear the voice of one crying. I hear the voice.